Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal, exploring the Lumetri scopes. Okay, first things first. If you use the old method of a reference monitor and the old scopes, that's gone. Those scopes are no longer available and they weren't that good to begin with. The scopes that are in, in Premiere Pro now came from Speedgrade and they're way better. They look beautiful, they're accurate, but they've got a few more advantages like they actually run in real time. So as you're playing, they change. In Speedgrade, uh, you actually have to go in to the preferences and change that and it requires quite a bit of, of overhead to do that. All right. The scopes are essential. Now you don't have to, to know and use every single one of them all the time. A few scopes um, are fine. If you like the waveform and vector scope, then you're probably going to be uh, fine. You don't have to use all of them. They are essential in helping you understand because well, a lot of times people will be editing, first of all, on 8-bit displays and you need to be able to see the full range of color and you can't unless you're going out to a 10 or 12-bit display through SDI and all this other stuff. But at least a scope can give you a good idea. It can also help you balance colors. It's basically going to help where our eyes are deficient in, in uh, when we're trying to color gray. And I'll also show you at the end, very important, how to set up the order of the scopes the exact way you want. Let's go have a look. So by default, I'm in my editing workspace. If I click on the color workspace, it's going to change me to my color workspace and bring up my Lumetri color on the right and my scopes on the left. If they're not there, they're probably buried behind one of these panels. And if it's not showing, then you might need to reset your workspace and you can reset the uh, saved workspace and you can see the one for color. So. There's several uh, scopes in here and we're going to take them one by one. The first one that we're going to look at is we're going to go and look at the uh, vector scope HLS. And I just right clicked in this menu. You can also go down to the wrench and click and get the same menu. But I'll be right clicking in this menu here. I'm just going to go to my presets and choose vector scope HLS. And the HLS is hue saturation lightness. Sometimes people prefer hue saturation of value, but it's the same thing. The vector scope HLS displays the hue saturation lightness and the signal information at a glance. In the bottom right hand side, you can see that we can clamp the signal in this was added in Speedgrade for, um, for broadcast because when Speedgrade was created, it didn't have a broadcast vector scope. It only had this scope and it didn't clamp the signals. Primarily, that's because the original Speedgrade was made for film and raw workflows, not for broadcast at all. And when Adobe brought that on board, it started to incorporate broadcast and still keep the, the raw and, and film. So the clamp signal there, um, to me, it doesn't work exactly the same way as speed grade, but you know what, if you're doing broadcast, just turn that on. You'll also notice that beside that, we've got an 8-bit, or it just says float. You can think of this, this is your 32-bit floating point um, uh, view. And you can see just by looking at this that it is not completely uh, intact. It's slightly broken up. And we can see that here, and we can see that here. And this is the, the startling one because this clip on the left is an airy raw file. So we're talking about real raw. So if you want to see real raw, then you need it in floating point. Now you can see that. Even the other slightly compressed formats look this way. All right, that's all I'm going to show you on this one. It's of no use for you if you're doing broadcast or web, only if you're using film or um, uh, broadcast film, sorry, film and raw workflow. All right, now let's go look at the YUV. And the YUV is for uh, broadcast and it's based on um, a color wheel. So. If you look at my color wheel on the right hand side and this over here, you can see there's yellow. Yellow is right there. The opposite of yellow is blue. The red, the opposite of red is cyan and green and the opposite of green is magenta. The boxes that are on the inside are the 75% uh, 
which is what people will shoot for when they're going for broadcast. And these outer ones are 100%. And basically, broadcast wants to keep you in line. I've got some bars over here that when I click on it, we're going to look at a different view. You can see when you're looking at images, they look different. And you won't see grayscale on here. You won't see luminosity. If I actually click on some um, grayscale images, you'll see nothing. It just stays in the center. That's because this is calculating the uh, chroma or the color value. And the line that's running directly inside here, the I and the Q, they actually um, pertain, whoops, let's go over here. They pertain to these colors on the bars. And these are standard SMPTE bars. And they're, this one's a little off, but it should be on the Q and this one's on the I. So people will use this line here to evaluate uh, skin tone and how much uh, saturation. So if we just go to saturation and start pushing that, you can s easily see that we're pushing that beyond that, that 75% um, line and we're gonna start clipping that if you're, you're sending this out to broadcast. And let's go back to our uh, bars in here. And if we go to our hue saturation curves, what's interesting about this is you can see that we have red hit at 75%, and that's this red here. If I go to my hue saturation and click on the red, this will put three uh, points in my curve, and the, the, the outside ones are meant to anchor this, and the middle one is the one that I'm moving. So you can see, as I move that point, I can force that out to 100%, or alternatively, I could pull that back. And you could do the same for any of the other ones here. Here's yellow, and I can move that and pull that back. Now, the in-phase and quadrature ones, they're, there's, they're not part of the primaries, but um, Hopefully I can grab one of these for you. So I'm thinking that color here is probably um, around that value. So if you watch that, you can see that guy moving around as I move this in and out. So very important that the, the vector scope YUV doesn't show any um, black and white, luminosity or luminance information. It's strictly there for color reference, uh, but it is great for catching saturation. So you've got that. Now let's go to another preset. Let's go to the RGB parade. And if we look at the RGB parade as an image, uh, what you're looking at is a description um, of this information. It displays the overall red, green, and blue signals um, over on the right hand side and depending on what I'm looking at you can see that this is a darker image and that's um, definitely a brighter image and this is our raw image and if we go back to floating point and look at this you can see how much cleaner that information is same with this same with that and if we go back over to uh, any of our charts you can see that they're lining up um, inside here and here's a, a chart that's based on uh, different values. So it's 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. And you can see it showing up directly in here. Now, what might seem odd is that you get three lines, red, green, and blue. It doesn't mean that the image you're looking at is separated in three ways. It's just the red, green, and blue pulled sideways. The waveform, which we're gonna look at in a second, has all of this on top of each other. Where is this useful? Well, I'll tell you where it's useful. To me, it's useful when I'm in basic correction using the temperature controls. You can see the red is higher than the blue, telling me that this is a warm image. And if I start moving the top over to the blue, you can see it works as a teeter-totter, and I can affect it that way. And the same with the tint, I can move the green up. So I could actually um, neutralize this image, remove the, the color cast with a completely black and white monitor. In fact, I can do it without even looking at the image just by looking over at the waveform. I'm a big fan of the RGB uh, parade. Now you can look at the RGB parade in a few ways. So here's the parade type, that's RGB. This is YUV. What YUV means is the left side here, that's the luminosity. And here's the chrominance described as uh, something that's not RGB. So some people like this, I don't. But it is very useful if you like looking at that way. So the other thing is, so we've got RGB 
NYUV, and then you've got both of them as white only. So if we look at RGB as color, we'll see that. But if we go back to RGB white, it's the same values just in white. Some people love to look at, at just flat black and white scopes, although I am changing color value. And the same thing with the YUV white. It's the same as it's the same as this YUV except without the color. And and these also play back in real time, but I'm going to try playing this back. There's no way I can play back a 2K every raw on a laptop with 32-bit floating point. I can edit this if I want, and it's going to change in real time. But trying to play this back, you're really asking for too much. Okay, so let's go back and look at um, the waveform. So the waveform is like the RGB parade, but instead of separating red, green, and blue, they're all on top of each other and the luminance. So waveform is all of the chrominance, the chroma and the luma all slapped on top of each other. And the default here is to show everything as color. There's a ton of information here, but let's go look at our charts. You can see the same kind of thing happening when we look at our charts. Okay, very easy to, uh, to understand. If we go to the waveform type, we can also see four kinds of waveforms, RGB, Luma, YC, or YC no chroma. So the RGB is what we're looking at here. The Luma, now when we're looking at the Luma waveform, it displays the IRE values, which are the, the uh, Institute of Radio Engineers. On the left-hand side, you can see these numbers going from minus 20 to 120, with most people wanting to keep it uh, between zero and 100. But if you had super whites or super blacks and super whites, you could see them. Uh, there is the YC, and the YC displays the luminance uh, represented as green in the waveform and the chrominance represented as blue. So this is just, if you think about this as uh, color and, and uh, luminosity or chroma and luma, that's those two green and, and blue colors in here. And the last is YC no chroma. So watch the blue disappear. Now you're only looking at, um, at YC information. If we go over to our chart, so if we look at this and go back to the uh, waveform and turn it to YC, you'll also see the, the uh, blue bars in there showing up. Uh, this is pretty close to some of the waveform uh, hardware devices that have been around for many years. All right. Let's also go and look at the histogram. In the histogram, uh, it displays statistical analysis of pixel density at each color uh, of uh, intensity level. I wrote that down. Um, if you come from Photoshop, then the histogram is something that you're going to uh, definitely recognize. And this also has a, an eight. They all have eight and 32-bit and, uh, uh, modes when you're working in it. But it'll show you the density of the pixels in here. And when we get to the airy raw, we'll see massive density. We go to, over here to our charts and we can see things break down. Um, here is a 16-bit gradient and it, in this one we just have uh, two colors. The rest of these intermediate colors are coming from the anti-aliasing happening, happening around in here. If we go to our um, chart we can see that. All right, if we go to our presets, you'll notice that Adobe puts a bunch of presets in here for you. So if you wanted to quickly just grab your RGB parade, um, you might think that you click here, but it actually adds it to it. And then you'd have to click here again. I'm right clicking and get rid of the histogram. So if you want to jump from one chart to another or one scope to another, you can jump to the presets and go right to a different preset. Adobe does put these together in multiple uh, forms. So here's Vectorscope YUV, Parade YUV, and Waveform YC. Boom, there you go. Uh, and that is a, a really popular view um, of uh, the scopes. If I hit my tilde key, uh, this is scalable, so it's going to jump to full screen. And sometimes if I need super accurate, big ass scopes, I normally work with two 27 inch displays. I can drag these scopes out to the second display and drag them up and have as many of them on the screen as possible. 
that's wicked cool. 27 inch monitor with, with uh, all these scopes on it. Uh, there's also the color space. So if you choose 601 is SD, 709 is HD. By default, it stays on there, but you could uh, jump between those two if you uh, were working in HD. And uh, back to our presets. And you can choose all scopes RGB or all scopes uh, YUV um, YC. So they all come on. I don't really think it's useful to have the raw and film vector scope beside here. All right. So here's my tip for creating the order of scopes the way you want. Um, obviously here there's one, two, three, four, five. So you have five scopes up on the screen. If you have three, it will always put two together on the top and one together at the bottom. That's the order of things. But, and, and people get frustrated because if you come from speed grade, you can manually drag any scope anywhere. We can't do this by dragging, but you can definitely get any order you want. All right, so let's make up an order. I want vector scope. I want RGB parade and I want waveform and I want the waveform to be at the bottom. The first thing to do is to turn on the first one that you want. Now let's go and grab the RGB parade. You see how it goes to the right hand side. Now let's grab the waveform. Ah, so you start with the top left one that you want and you add the other one. So what if we wanted waveform and vector scope and histogram? So waveform, um, I would go to my presets and choose waveform, then choose um, histogram, and then choose, did I say that order? Vector scope. So start with the first one and then add to them. Uh, I know it can be a little frustrating people trying to move these around. So that's a quick look at, at uh, the Lumetri scopes. They are essential to understanding and working with color and analyzing video as soon as you bring it in and you look at it and it'll give you a scientific, a better idea of what's underlying in that color and guide you to creating the best color look that you want. All right. Hopefully you found this informative. If you have, then please click on the link to subscribe to Video Revealed. And if you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, there's a special link in the description for you to get your free 30-day trial. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.